Hey everybody, welcome to another Year of Sundance 2024 edition, celebrating 40 years of independent film. We got some really great interviews coming up for you, so stay tuned, like and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching Breezeway Productions. Well, speaking with... Olivia Michaela Ross. Nice to meet you, Olivia. Tell me a little about your film that's in the festival this year. So this year I'm here with Seeking Mavis Beacon, um, which is a film that was made um, I'm associate producer and I'm also inside of the film with one of my really good friends, Jasmine, the director. And it is a film about um, kind of trying to join these like two ideas of like Mavis Beacon um, and kind of the figure that she is within like kind of the memories of people who played Mavis Beacon teaches typing um, and kind of her historical importance in technology history. So like one of the first introductions to artificial intelligence a lot of people had in their homes was through the form of Mavis Beacon, who is almost like one of our prototypes for like these servile fembots like Siri, Alexa, Cortana, before all of those people, you had Mavis Beacon who would analyze your typing speed and give you like advice on how to improve your typing, right? So the kind of the model for making this technology like more easier to accept um, in like American homes and globally yeah. was kind of housed in the body of this woman who is a real woman, Renee L'Esperance, right? Who's not quite like the magical, mythical typing tutor that everyone was kind of marketed to assume she is. Lots of people still think Mavis Beacon's a real person. Um, so the adventure that Jasmine and I went on was like, oh my god, she's not a real person, but there is a real person, and we want to know more about her. We want to know about the person whose body, whose labor was kind of used to fuel this like like collective folktale of like a typing prodigy who is a really beloved character in lots of people. So yeah, that's kind of a really long pitch <laughs> of yeah. the kind of journey that we went on to begin. That's a very in-depth analysis for, for the project, but I, you definitely covered a lot of bases and it sounds very intricate. So tell me about the team that put it together because it sounds like you had to have a lot of research and a lot of deep dives into, into this field. So how did, how did all that play out? I mean, so at the core of it, it was me and Jasmine and our producer Getty and our awesome cinematographer Yulen um, and also like additional friends who like helped us get different shots and our sound person Joaquin um, and our editor but at the core of kind of the research it was kind of just Jasmine and I very feverishly um, going through like all of the kind of like techniques at our disposal, first through the internet and then on the ground. We kind of took on the role of being like private investigators, but also tried to like trouble this idea of like what is a detective and what is detective work because it's so also like carceral and like in conversation with surveillance in a way that we as black femmes like weren't really interested in doing. And so it was like, how do we take on this work that we're interested in, which is memory work and reparative kind of healing work um, and go about uh, this like both a uh, like, wellness check and also just like do what we see as like kind of revisionist healing work on an archive that doesn't give Mavis Beacon as we see it the kind of historical value that we think she deserves as someone who is actually like a very early like icon in technolo technology history to us. Wow. So yeah. Well I can sense your passion into it and it's a very interesting and deep dive uh, piece of film and uh, congratulations again and we wish you a great premiere. Thank you. Thank Thank you so much for talking with me. Speaking with? Yelen Cohen. Nice to meet you. Uh, tell me a little about your role on the project that's uh, accepted to the festival this year. Uh, I was a uh, cinematographer and also co-editor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your uh, your camera choices for this since you did the cinematography. Uh, camera choices, you know, I'll say we had shot with uh, the FS7 a couple of years back, Jasmine and I, when we were collaborating together back in school okay. and we always felt like it was like kind of our dream camera and um, it's kind of an old camera but it has kind of a, a, a timeless feel look to it which we felt like nowadays that the hyper 8k sort of image quality is a little bit too too defined and we wanted something with a little um, still kind of a little texture to it okay uh, and the super 35 
th sensor was um, was really cool for that. So it's interesting when you look at the subject matter, it deals with AI and technology and Silicon Valley and things like that. Did you want to have more of a futuristic look? Did you really want to like what kind of filters did you use in order to really make it that type of vibe? Like, what are your thoughts on it? Honestly, um, we come from a very uh, DIY uh, guerrilla filmmaking background. Okay. Um, where everything we, we sort of research is online and it's really through trial and error. So yeah. we, we were fortunate to have like a little bit of, of, of money to, you know, try, try certain things that, um, that, you know, were working some that weren't. Yeah. And, um, and so I think there was more of an emphasis on what's happening in front of the camera, rather what's happening with the camera technically. So we spent a lot of time, especially with the headquarters, yeah. Uh, lighting it, Heard. perfecting the lighting there, okay. um, and uh, and then with the outfits also. So everything that you see in front of the camera and the blocking, we were also paying attention to to the blocking a lot. Um, okay. Yeah, when we could, because sometimes you could control, and sometimes you you know it's also a hybrid documentary. So there's things you can control, some that you can't. So yeah. you just have to improvise and roll with it.